Today I'm riding something which splits opinion. Not just because of the styling or the colour. The reason this bike splits opinion is because it is electric. This is the Zero SRF electric bike. Zero's top of the range electric machine. Very kindly lent to me by Wheels Motorcycles. So check out the links below. Wheels are also a Zero dealer in case you didn't uh, weren't aware. So I've had this bike for a week. I've taken it on big trips. I've depleted the battery on it. You know, I've I've really tested this machine and now I'm ready to give my verdict on electric. Not electric motorcycles on a whole, but specifically the Zero SRS. Let's power it on. Yep, it is on. <laughs> it is ready to go. One of the most bizarre things about riding an electric motorcycle, well, there's two things mainly. One is you've got no clutch, <laughs> so that takes a little bit of getting used to. The second is, is this. Just how goddamn quiet they are. This bike is 110 horsepower and 190 newton meters of torque <laughs> 190 bear in mind the new super duke is about 140 newton meters you now so this bike has a serious amount of torque that's not full torque because i'm in street mode you have to go to the chops mode to get full power i've configured a, a special mode called chops to give me full power what's it like to actually ride as a motorcycle well it's comfortable the seat is extremely comfortable i think you could do some serious mileages in this seat but you won't have to because you have to get off and charge it but we'll get on that in a minute weather protection is also pretty good on this you know it looks like a decent sized motorcycle in front of you you've got a tft screen and you've got all the mod cons you've got fully adjustable shower suspension front and rear so, you know, it's got the spec. It does have the spec. We'll go through all of the details of this machine on the walk around. The horses love it. Thank you. What Zero say is this bike will do a maximum range of 166 miles. That's the maximum possible range. If you're going on motorways, you can expect around 90 miles. And the, if it, in, in the blend between motorways and town work, you get about 110 miles. What I found, I took this bike to Farnborough the other day when I rode the RT. I took this up to Farnborough and back, and it was very cold. It was about 8 degrees that day. It's only 11 degrees today. And what I found is the cold weather seriously affects the battery performance. And on that cold day, it was about, I think it was a 70 mile round trip. I did the whole trip in eco mode, which is with maximum regen, you know, lowest power settings. There was a bit, a good mix of, there was some motorway, some back roads, there was a good mix of, of riding, you know, but I, riding it as economically as possible, I only managed 70 miles. And when I got home, I had 1% left on the battery. I even had to turn off the heated grips and everything because <laughs> I was worried I wasn't going to make it home. So bear that in mind if you're thinking of getting one of these as a commuter to use in the winter performance and range is seriously impacted by the temperature Whoa. so this bike is not shy on performance it is fast you know and of course it's there's no gears so it's a smooth power what i've actually got i've got some timing equipment and i'm going to go to my little bit of private road and do a 0 to 60 test on this with my uh, with my timing equipment so we'll see what it does 60 in and we compare that to what the street triple r does it in because i've also <laughs> i've timed the street triple r to 60. so we'll see if it can be as quick as a street triple r to 60. power what you do find you know you have 190 newton meters of torque yes you do and that is available from zero rpm 
So you've got 190 newton meters of torque available from zero, from well, from one RPM, I guess, not from zero. But all that torque is available instantly, unlike you know a petrol Viet motorcycle where it, the maximum torque is sort of middle range on the revs, depending on that, what it's tuned like. So you've got all that torque immediately, but as the revs increase, the torque and power decreases on an electric bike. So you get a lot of punch, a lot of power at the initial throttle opening but as the revs increase the power and torque decreases so it's like an opposite side graph to what uh, you know a regular bike would be if you put it on a diner so let's stop here i'm going to give it a full bit of welly chop it's had, this bike does have traction control and all that by the way ready go Sixty. See, I, I think that isn't as quick as I've had these go before, and I think this is due to the cold weather again. It's impacting the performance. What's happens is that that liquid in that lithium-ion battery becomes lazy when it's cold, and it can't transmit the electricity through it as well. And it also that goes with the regen as well. When you're regening, it can't regen into the battery as well either. So you sort of you, you've got a double whammy. Brakes. Brakes are pretty good, you know, they're not sports bike brakes, but they certainly stop you. What is really weird is when you just pull up at junctions and it's just silent. It's actually really very nice, that. I don't like the sound of the bikes whirring. It sounds like a tube train. But what I do like is when you stop, and you can just hear the world. You know, that is nice. My specialist timing equipment. I'll put it there. <laughs> it's called a draggy, by the way. If anyone wants to know what it's called, it's called a draggy. Draggy. Let's go to my draggy app. Hang on, someone's driving down my private test track. Uh, excuse me. Who gave you permission to come here? Three, two... One, go! What did we get? What are the results? A 0 to 60 of 5.27 seconds, that was. 0 to 60 in 5.27 seconds. I think you can do better than that. I think that's because of the cold weather that's impacting it. The Street Triple R did it in 4.2 seconds. So Street Triple R, 4.2 seconds to 60. So yeah, quite interesting. Quarter mile, 18 seconds to quarter mile. That can't be right, that's that's not it, that's not right. But yeah, that's what you're looking at. 0 to 60, 5.27 seconds. I think this would be as quick as le at least as the Street Triple R in warmer conditions. So it just goes to show you how much you know, this bike is impacted, or these batteries, should I say, are impacted by the cold weather. Interesting, huh? Another thing people always say about these bikes is, oh, no, the infrastructure's not ready when you're out, you can't charge anywhere. This app called ZapMap, this is one Bruce Smart put me onto, it shows you all of the charging stations. So around me, I've got all of these charging stations, you know, and not only does it do that, it list, you can list them and it will tell you, updated one minute ago, if there's some spaces, if there's problems. So I'm in the middle of nowhere, in the countryside, there's a charging station two minutes away, four of the types of chargers I want, click on it, so it tells you uh, there was uh, two were available two months ago. Some of them you click, you click on it, say it was available one minute ago. Let's try this one. This one is two miles away. Again, two months ago. Can we refresh? There's another one two miles away. Available one minute ago. Brilliant. Let's go there then. Eight minutes away. Yes, please. And we head over there. And we and we test out this whole charging business. As we've got plenty of juice left, I'm going to leave it in the chops mode and have a bit of fun. There's different options about charging this. This one is fitted with the free phase charger, which I think is about an extra two grand, and that gives the ability to go to these charging centres, and I can charge this bike up from zero to 95% in one hour. It's still an hour, but you can pull up. Have a cup of coffee, 
maybe a little bite to eat and uh, an hour isn't too bad if you could then get 166 miles out of the range you, you could sort of do that and you could almost go on tour with lots of extended stops i guess but that uh, that extra is two grand or it might be two and a half grand for the six the six phase charger okay the bike also can be charged at home of course and that's what i've been doing i've been plugging it into the three pin socket and charging it and it takes about five hours to charge at home on your regular three pin plug again that's not too bad you know if you're commuting to work coming home banging it on charge or even driving to work and getting access to just a three pin plug you can charge it in five hours to 100 percent and that will cost you one pound 95 so that is where electric does start to make a little bit of sense when you talk about the costs involved yes buying the motorcycle is expensive this bike is around about twenty thousand pounds it is a lot of money but once you bought it it will cost you one pound 95 to fill it <laughs> if you like there's then no maintenance no real servicing costs there's no oil changes and no spark plugs the only things involved with servicing are things like brake pads you know greasing suspension the uh, the drive is a belt which i think lasts about eighty thousand miles so once you bought it the running costs are very very low so so far we've done 14 miles and i've used 21 percent of the battery in 14 miles but that is in chops mode where it's got plenty of go the bike does also have heated grips which i'm going to put on i couldn't put them on the other day because i was worried about range but i'm going to put them on high on heated grips low off high bit of heated grips as well give that battery a right pasty left here oh i nearly went to do the gears then i nearly went to knock it down then it doesn't come with a quick shift or a blipper <laughs> the ride from it is uh, i'm not sure about the ride it's just got fully adjustable shower suspension big piston forks fully adjustable front and rear shock as i said but the ride is a little bit crashy at times and it, and, and also it feels a little bit soft i don't know if it's because this is you know quite a big bike this bike weighs 236 kilos i believe so it's not obscenely heavy but it's sort of adventure bike heavy thank you <laughs> you probably do have to watch out for people stepping out in front of you all of those sorts of uh, things you have to worry about on an electric vehicle he loves it yes it's not a tube train it's only me posty loves it so you do get some looks it's quite new this tech isn't it not many people have probably seen an electric motorcycle you're telling me there's a charge station down here are you kidding me you're having a laugh i would say mm. really in there I reckon there could be a charging point in this car park. Electric vehicle charging point. Ah, oh, you know the problem though. I haven't brought the lead. <laughs> I haven't got the lead to plug into that. Looks like it doesn't actually have the lead at this charging point. You need to bring your own lead and I didn't do that. I thought there'd be something to unplug and plug into the bike like at a petrol station. Oh dear, that's the first fail. There's my first problem. It's probably told me that if I'd read from that Zap app properly. But I didn't because I'm an idiot. Yeah, they've started doing this to stop people just charging and sitting at the at these charge points all day. You, if you go out, if you stay over an hour, you get charged £10. So it's to keep people moving on and not just buggering off. Actually, just let me just check it hasn't got the charge cables in there. Because I'd feel rather silly if I go away and it had the charge cables in it all along. Oh, I'm talking nonsense. It does have the charge cables. There we go. I'm talking absolute bollocks. It has got the charge cables. So I don't have a clue what I'm doing here. This is all new. I've not researched this. 
you plug it in there, I know that much. <sighs> Not that end. <laughs> that end goes in there, like that. I bet you have to go to the app or something to these people, don't you? Charger ID for information, go to Genie Point. Oh, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot of faffing. It's gone red now. Error. Oh, I should have gone to like a bigger, bigger charge point, shouldn't I? Cause I to do my first one, because I don't really know what I'm going to be doing here. I can't, I, I, oh, it seems like a failure if I just leave it like this, doesn't it? And not try and get it working. Or should I just go to another one, you know, the ones you see in the garages, which, you know, this is obviously a little independent company or something. <laughs> it's probably the biggest electric network in the UK. Yeah, I oh, can't even get them in. How on earth do you get the dozo go back in? I tell you, this old electric thing seemed like a lot of faff already. I'm worried, I want a, I want a proper garage now. A proper Botley service station. Let's go there, because that will probably be... A more of a proper charge point than one of these little Mickey Mouse jobs. Bye bye! So that was a bit of a fail. Let's, let's go to the proper service station, a proper petrol station, if you like, which has got those bigger machines that I've seen before with the actual cabling attached. A bit Mickey Mouse, that job. I know there's been a recent news that I think it's Honda, KTM. Uh, Yamaha and I think a couple of other the big players have agreed on a standardised electric battery. So what that means is it'll be more like a gas bottle type solution. So you need to you stop at a garage and they you do an exchange. You take your old battery in, you plug in a new one, and you ride off. Now that to me, that seems like the perfect solution. There's no waiting about. Yeah, okay, they're quite big. You may have to have an attendant sort of maybe slot it in and out for you <laughs> and then uh, fit it like you would like they used to in the olden days when you used to put the petrol in your car for you but that is perfect isn't it pull up put a new battery and off you go again that makes a lot of sense and that is the way forward i think standardizing on things like batteries and stuff obviously that is a few years away oh that chops mode is powerful Ah, oh, I do like this quietness when you stop. It's very, it is enjoyable. It may be you're losing the noise, the, you know, the, ex the excitement of the sound of the bike and a bit of the actual character of the motorcycle and engagement from the motorcycle. But it does open it up to enjoying a bit more of the environment around you. And depending what sort of ride you're on, if you're on a ride, you know, to go out and have fun on the bike and it's all about the ride and the twisties, then you're not going to like it as much. If the ride is about seeing places, touring, it, it, you do feel more connected with the environment without the noise. I know it sounds a little bit silly, but you definitely do feel more connected with the place you are. <laughs> so, here we go, let's try it. We're at the next station. Let's see if we can find what I like to call a proper charge point. Here we go, this is what I'm talking about. Like these ones over here, look. Instavolt, with proper things you plug in. So let's open the flaps. Connect to car. So let's just follow the instructions very carefully. Oh, I don't have one of those. I don't have one of those. Is this one the same? I don't have one of those. Oh dear, problems again already. I don't have one of those. I don't have one of those. So, I'm scuppered already. I don't have one of those connections. <laughs> oh God, this is going badly. This is going badly. It says, uh, oh yeah, it says here, look, it's not, it's not got my sort. You idiot, this has my sort, I'm that sort, I'm the half moon. I have to go there instead. Another nine minutes. <laughs> oh Jesus. This is the problem, standardization. This is what I'm talking about. Why have we got all these different sort of connectors? What, you know, standardize for heaven's sake. 
what have we got? 66 miles. So I've done 20 miles. I've got 76% battery left. Sounding all right, actually, at the moment. Better than it was the other day. And I've got the heated grips on. Maximum. If this was my bike, I'd obviously be a lot more keyed up on how it all worked, what top of, sort of connections there are. But this goes to show you it's not as straightforward as you might imagine it would be. Power! I do love that drop of torque it's got. What does it handle like, really? Uh, it punches out the bends. See, even with all these... Oh, look at this, bit of a bend here. Oh, yeah, yeah! You know what? Oh, it's squirming a little bit then. But it, um, now I've got used to the, the handling of it. It changes direction reasonably. You know, it feels, it feels okay to ride as a bike. I think you can have fun on this. You can enjoy yourself on this. You can get some kicks in the twisties on it. Low speed, it's, you know, nice and controllable. I think what they've done with the throttle response, even in my chops mode, which is the crazy mode, it's still, you know, there's no initial snap. What I'd like, you know, I think if you unleash the full 190 newton meters of torque from one RPM, you would be quite likely to spin the tires up or high side it or flip it. They've definitely got a little bit of a softness there as it initially opens. For me, being a hooligan, I'd like to have that a bit more one-to-one -one and not quite so softened. Give me that power a little bit more aggressively, please. And then I'm sure you could do some stonking wheelies on this. Because you wouldn't have to change gear. <laughs> but I guess that's not the top of everyone's list. One thing which would be nice would be some sort of USB. Because you, you need apps and stuff for these bikes to find your petrol, your petrol stations, your charging points. Some sort of USB charger on the dash somewhere would be nice so I could plug my phone in. I couldn't find one. It's got chargers under the seat, under this tank area, the trunk, but there's nothing to plug into just up here. Maybe that's an option, but I'd like to have my phone plugged in and charging because <laughs> you're going to need that, because you're going to need that your phone to find these, uh, these charging points. The switch gear on this is very Aprilia. It's the same switch gear as what's on the Dossadoro. You know, this single button. It's, it, it's a slight criticism, actually. I'm, I don't like the interface with the TFT. It's all just on this slide wheel and press. And it seems a little bit laggy. The actual software seems a bit laggy. It's got cruise control. It's got single button cruise control again. So you've got to put all that one button. You've got to use all your cruise control just with that one button. Which again, you know, there's no buttons to go up and down on speed and all that sort of stuff. So the actual controls are very minimal. I don't know why they just couldn't have a few more buttons to make it a little bit easier to use. But it's got a lot of grunt. I know you can't hear me, but stay there. Loud pipes save lives, you know. Oh, it reckons it's here. And this isn't a proper garage either. It's one of these again, that we've got to plug in. It's one of these jobbies. Let's try this one. If this doesn't work, I'm going home. Well, the birds have let you know what they think to it. It fits me. That's a good sign. Cable connected. Now, right, who wants my card now? Please hold card over reader. Please wait. I'm waiting. Incorrect card. I've also got some sort of, I need some sort of payment card, do I? Not just a regular bank card. This charge point is operated by Gron Contact. Do you download the Gron app? Need the app. Uh, you need the app. I need the app. I mean, I'm going to have to register and do all sorts of stuff, aren't I? I just want to buy some electricity. Why can I not just plug in and use my card and pay for it? Why do I need the app? I don't want the app. Now I've got to get these cables back in the bike. I don't want the app. I don't want to download the app. I just want to buy some electricity. Now I've got these big cables everywhere. I've got to get these cables back in this little hole again. So this review, I think we're going to have to just give it up give it as a bad job.
we can't actually buy electricity anywhere without having to download apps, register beforehand, fanny around. It's annoying. It's a bit annoying. I don't understand why I cannot just, like you would at a fuel pump, put your petrol in and pay for it. Pay beforehand if you have to. Pay up front, you know, put your card first, lady, lady pay at the pump, pay before you buy, same thing. Why can't you do that? <sighs> anyway, while we're here, while we're here, we'll get the other camera out and do a quick walk around. So there she is, the SRS. I want to call it the SRF, because surely the F means it's got fairing. I thought the F stood for fairing, but no, this is the SRS. It's a good looking bike. I do think it's good looking. The quality's there. I actually really like this sort of battleship grey colour. Much prefer this to that blue one I've seen in the past. Yet, yeah, the fairing is odd. It's not exactly a looker, but it goes with the look of the bike. It's very angular. It's not sexy looking. It's, you know, it's different. I think they've gone for different and they definitely pulled it off. Show her big piston forks but the different bottoms on than the normal bottoms a bit odd the headlights are quite odd look at the headlights like a square lights in there quite mean looking quite unusual I actually sort of quite like that this is the battery this whole compartment inside the trellis frame up front is the battery that's all battery 14.4 volts I guess that is Showa rear shock fully adjustable but it looks a bit weird. I don't know why it's this weird finish on it. Why is it not regular finish to it? But it is fully adjustable and it is a shower unit. That is your motor. That is the electric motor. And you see the end of it there down by the, the foot pegs and stuff. LED rear lights, no LED indicators because this bike is American. You know, they don't have LED, not allowed LED indicators in America. So it seems they've not given LED indicators to the UK. For some reason no chain but we have a belt the belt is good for something like 80,000 miles it's like a carbon in reinforced belt I think the belts are expensive though rear seat of course passage looks quite comfortable rear seat quite a lot of padding in it quite big and you've got some grab rails and I've seen these with like luggage and top box on as well so you can kit it up with a bit of carrying capacity that's where you charge it or try to charge it as you've seen today and that is the trunk I'm not opening it again You've seen that enough today. Your dash is here with your different modes. You know, TFT, quite clear. You can adjust your traction control, different modes of traction control. It's also got an app, which will tell you a little bit about your bike. You can customize things in here. You can go into like your rider modes. You can change your dashboard settings. You can change, that's the dashboard. You can change what you want displayed in each quadrant of the dashboard. So efficiency time, you know, so you can fully customize it all. And as soon as you change it on there, it updates straight around the dashboard. So that, 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 that's quite a nice little touch. Manage your ride modes. You can go into your ride modes. I'm in the chops mode at the moment. I can rename that, of course, <laughs> the chops mode. I'm going to go to eco. There you go. If you go into eco, you can. They can fully customize everything. That I can maximum speed in eco 75. The power is right down. The torque's right down. Maximum regeneration, maximum brake regeneration. Chops mode. This is the one I can edit. Oh, I've not even got full power, look. What are you an idiot? I didn't have it maxed out. I didn't have maximum power in the chop mode, chops mode. You fool. You fool. You fool, chops. I'm going to have to... Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? My 0 to 60 thing's all to cock now. Oh, no. Let's go back. So it's not remembered it, that's the trouble though, it's not remembered. Bugger, bugger. We're gonna have to go back to sport and do the walk to 60 again. Bugger. Chops mode sucks. Let's go to full sport mode. Hello. <sighs> Listen to that bird song. You hear that? That is a lesser spotted woodpecker. Hmm. Whoa, yeah, that is a fair bit more punchy in that sport mode. I can't believe I was riding it around in silly old, silly old chops mode at half power. What an idiot. Three, two, one, go. 
4.8 seconds. I think that is still a little bit off of the Street Triple R, but it's getting very, very close to it. 4.8 seconds to 60. Yeehaw! <laughs> I really want to knock it down. Where's my, where's my gearbox? I wish these had some sort of gearbox. I know you don't need it. I know it's just only going to add weight. But I can't help feeling I'm missing going up and down the box. But it is what it is. It's still sporty enough. It's still fun. It is still a lot of fun. It doesn't feel like a big, heavy, unwieldy thing. Whoa! Out the seat. It doesn't. Woo! It is a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh yeah! Whee! On those Juan brakes! You can notice a bit of weight there. And it's taken me a little while to get used to the handling of this bike, to feel comfortable enough to push it on like that. And uh, <laughs> it's perfectly fine once you're used to it. So what do I think to this? It's, it is, it's, it's a good bike. It's £20,000. What other petrol powered bikes could you buy for 20 grand? Mm. You could buy quite, you could buy more or less anything. <laughs> so it's a lot of money and it still doesn't look like a 20 grand bike. The componentry is not a 20 grand bike level. Obviously all of that money is in the battery and the motor, you know, that's where the money is. And even though this technology is coming down, it's getting more affordable, it's still a lot of money, 20 grand, for a bike which isn't really worth 20 grand. Yes, of course, once you've bought it, it's going to be cheap to run, £1.95 to fill it with electricity. So that's cheap, you know, as opposed to 15 quid to fill, you know, a, a regular motorcycle. So it's cheap to run. There's no servicing, like I mentioned before. So you've got all of that cost benefit. So over five years, I'd like to know how the, the cost of ownership looks after five years. Perhaps it will then be level or even better. Budgeting this costs 20 grand to outlay. Over that five year period, I wonder how the cost of ownership would look over that five years by the time you've put all the fuel into your petrol machine compared to just charging this, all the maintenance, all the servicing on your petrol machine compared to this. That would be a very interesting comparison. I don't know if anyone's actually done that. But uh, yeah, so it, it's maybe expensive to buy, but you may recoup that in the long term if you plan to keep the bike. Maybe even in three years you may recoup that. I've got to say a massive, massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this. They're a Zero D there. They've got the full range of Zeros. I've also ridden the FXS before, which I really like that little lightweight. I'll put a link to the review of that one. I think that made more sense because it was more of an eight, nine grand motorbike. It wasn't a 20K bike. So that I could see. If I wanted something just to get to work on as a tourer, I think the FXX would suit me better. But uh, massive thanks to Wheels, really appreciated. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd like to try one of the Energikas, the electric Energikas, to see how that compares to this. So that may be coming this year as well if I can get my hands on the Energica but uh, if you like it like what you've seen subscribe to the channel tick that bell and I will see you on the next video cheers guys thanks a lot this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>